Welcome to Endoscopy on Air 2020. Watch Amrita Sethi to give a lecture on pancreatic necrosectomy with a new device. This is a 42-year-old, sorry, 42-year-old gentleman that was uh, had a history of necrotizing pancreatitis, secondary to potentially medication a related um, disease. He developed severe necrosis throughout his abdomen, um, extending down into his pelvis. Um, it, he was sent to us for endoscopic drainage um, and further necrosectomy. We did the initial drainage using a 20 millimeter hot axios catheter. You see the catheter here entering the collection with deployment of the initial uh, the, the first flange of the stent into the collection. The second step is um, a, a retraction of the catheter to allow for apposition of the cavity, uh, of the wall of the cavity and the stomach wall. And the last step is deployment of the flange within the gastric lumen in order to um, allow for drainage. And you see drainage of necrotic tissue. We then deploy a plastic stent in order to prevent occlusion and further infection. Follow-up CT shows resolution, some resolution, but ongoing necrosis. When we brought him back for the next session, we removed the Axio stent in order to help us access the collection and maneuver better. We also dilate the tract with a CRE balloon, 15 to 18 millimeter balloon, in order to allow better intubation with a therapeutic channel scope. Here you see the collection with a significant amount of debris, and we begin necrosectomy using various different instruments. Here, this is the tripod grasping forcep, but you can see that given the nature of the um, material within the collection, it is very uh, pasty and it is difficult to actually remove using these devices. Similarly, we tried a Roth net. Um, this can be used for necrosectomy. Again, it is very difficult to get around tissue using these devices, given the consistency of the necrosis and the inability to gain purchase. Also, with these types of tools, it does require constant going back and forth in and out of the cavity in order to try to remove the tissue. A retrieval basket can also be used, but as you can see, given the consistency, it can be difficult to get tissue within the basket itself. And you can see on the fluoro, the angulation of the scope sometimes can make these maneuvers difficult as again, one has to come out of the ca uh, cavity itself. Lastly, we try to snare as well. This can be used to um, advance over the tissue. Um, and one of the problems you can see with the snare is even while it has a good grab on the tissue, uh, the trailing amount of material is too large to come out of the fistula and therefore the actual amount of removed tissue always does seem to be less than desirable that we can, and we can see here. At the end of the procedure, we sometimes do lavage with hydrogen peroxide to help with further debridement. Um, it's always important if we do that to aspirate all of the fluid from the stomach in order to prevent any type of aspiration. And lastly, at the end of the session, we leave multiple double pigtail stents within the collection in order to allow for me continued mechanical debridement as well as maintain patency of the collection. Follow-up CT did show some resolution, but again, ongoing uh, collection. The patient had two additional necrosectomy sessions, approximately three to four weeks apart. On his second necrosectomy uh, session, a CT did show a new collection in the right lower quadrant um, and the patient did have some pain and fever. So during that session, we were interrogated the wall of the collection and were able to advance a wire through a sinus tract to the right lower quadrant. And when we did so, pus was seen to drain from that tract. Um, balloon dilation was performed over the wire and a long drain was extended into the collection itself. And here you can see um, some images of the balloon dilation of that tract and ultimately uh, a stent could be placed all the way into that communicating collection. Um, and this is a follow-up CT, the patient's symptoms resolved and the collection down in the right lower quadrant also resolved. 
For the next procedure, we decided to use the, new, the novel endorotor system by Interface that, um, sorry, sorry, by Interscope, um, that has a uh, rotating, automated rotating blade that helps to breed with the tissue. It also has an integrated irrigation system and a suction system that allows one to suction the debris out without having to remove the scope itself. This, um, this device was actually developed for or first approved for resection of early mucosal neoplasms. So as with the prior sessions, we first balloon dilated the cyst gastrostomy tract in order to allow for better access. And you can see the consistency of the material is very thick and almost like concrete. We pass the endorotor through the channel of the therapeutic scope, and you can see the window in the catheter where the blade is exposed. Again, um, this works by the suction pulling debris towards the blade as well as making contact with the exposed blade to the edge of the necrotic material. And then the irrigation that is going on helps suspend the debris and allow for improved um, drainage or suctioning um, as well as keeping the, the channel patent. And this was is as tedious as some of the other methods that we have. However, we do not need to go in and out of the cavity itself, and we do not need to perform blind necrosectomy as we do with many of our other tools. After this session, approximately 250 cc's of necrotic material were actually drained. Um, so it, it can be very effective. At the end of the procedure, we did attempt uh, a novel technique that we have developed here as well that's similar, use of a cytology brush. This is the steris um, uh, cytology brush that one can rotate and does a similar um, motion with the material. This is the follow-up CT that shows resolution, uh, more resolution, and now we will bring the patient back in some time for our last session.